Hi ladies, good afternoon and welcome to Meet the Artichoke Girls. Today we are talking to Linda and actually we, oh no, I was about to finish it but it's popped up saying that Artichoke is live for a terrible thought I'd put it on my own timeline again. Anyway, ladies, today we're meeting Linda, who is the original Artichoke Girl, because many moons ago, we set up the precursor to Artichoke together. As always, um, chat to each other. I'm slightly thrown because I'm the wrong side of the camera today. Um, hi, Michaela. How are you? Chat amongst yourselves. I will see questions as they come up, so I will answer them. But as always, we go through the video afterwards. And if we've missed anything, then we will come back to you. If you've got any questions you want to ask Linda, just type them and I will ask them as we go along. So we're going to kick off Linda with diamonds or pearls. Oh. Pearls, definitely. <laughs> Even though, I'm not sure anybody's ever offered me diamonds. But, but so you wouldn't say no to bling I probably then? Probably wouldn't, they? Probably not, but I do love pearls. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela's just said AF. Don't know what that's all about. Anyway, big knickers or small knickers? Ah, neither. In between knickers, shorties. Oh, shorties. What are the shorties? Shorties are, um, they're not high knickers and they're not, obviously, I don't, Little knickers, obviously, um, and, and they, they are like short, a bit like short. Oh, so like what French knickers used to be? Mm, yeah, probably a little shorter than that, but yeah, kind of come sort of mid, mid rise. Oh, okay. Um, but they're comfy, they don't leave, you know, they, you don't have lines, they're nice and comfy. Oh, actually, I think somebody in the changing room might have, sh might have shown me a pair of those the other day. She was she was showing me the knickers that I must have. So anyway, Linda, what was the first album that you ever bought? Oh, blimey. I think it was, um, it was the Academy um, of Ancient Music and probably um, Telemann. Goodness me. <laughs> because, because when I was growing up and, and young, we, I don't know, I, I suppose, I didn't buy, I didn't buy records. I'm not one of my peers, I think. You are <laughs> a very, very old woman. <laughs> oh, no. oh my God, <laughs> <Sorry>. no. <laughs> Michaela, is Linda shouting loud enough? Tell us if we need to speak up. So, we've decided you're very boring. What is your favourite colour? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like lots of colour, but my favourite colour, apart from black, <laughs> is probably purple. <laughs> and how do you know, Linda, that you're looking at purple? Because ah, you are colour blind, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am. And that's a very good question. Over the years, I've asked myself, and actually work, working with you... <laughs> Yeah. taught me a lot about how to judge a colour um, but I did spectacularly once say to my my mother-in-law how on earth had she managed to get her, all of her stuff matching because she is is a mad matcher for those of you who know mm. her um, in the, in shades of brown and actually she was wearing purple all the other way around <laughs> <laughs> anyway Michaela is saying do shout a little bit louder okay I, I will try speak okay. up sorry <laughs> So, you think you're seeing purple. This is really interesting because I don't quite understand colour blindness. I'm just going to put the phone actually slightly nearer okay. to you and then that will be easier. Yes, if, if, for those of you who are interested, it, it is interesting that the reason that I'm um, colour blind, um, my father was colour blind and my grandfather was colour blind and um, women only have... Um, women have two genes for um, colour and men only have one, which is why more men than women are colour blind. And so I must have inherited a faulty gene from my father, obviously, and, and also from my mother. But I am only colour blind to do with shades. So if I, if I see a colour that is purple or brown, 
out of context with any other colour. I, I might struggle to tell you whether it's purple or brown, but if I see it next to something, then I can normally tell because I see a different mix of colours. It's to do with shades that have a mix of colours and I will see, for instance, in turquoise, I will see it as more green or as more blue. Right. So it's not confusing red and green. No, it's actually no, degrees no, that you that's, see. That's right. Oh, OK. Well, I thought that people who were colour blind thought they were seeing red when they were seeing green. No, that's that's. That is obviously one type of colour blindness, but not the one that I have. And if I could remember, I'd tell you the scientific terms, but I can't. <laughs> so we've established that your favourite colour is black, and I've forgotten what the second one was. Purple. Purple. <laughs> Linda, what is your desert island makeup item? Oh, that, that's... <laughs> That would have to be tinted moisturiser, I think, because as you know, yeah. I'm never, I've never been great on, on the makeup front, really, because I'm always in a hurry and walking the dogs, and um, but I absolutely love tinted moisturiser. And it, you don't have rosacea, do you? No, I have, I do have heightened colour. Yeah. Um, so... I, in the winter, I can't just wear tinted moisturiser. I, I have to go for a, a full foundation. Full foundation. But in the summer, when I've got a bit of colour, then it's it's not so obvious. I tell you what, I've got this brilliant stuff from Chanel. Just um, bring it round and show it to you. It's like a a bronzer. I'm sure it's from Chanel, and you use a. Uh, a bronze a big bronzer right. brush but you wipe it all over your face mm -hmm. takes about 20 seconds i shall um drop some off to you it is absolutely okay, fabulous it's, be, it's what i've been using all this summer um if only i could i'm sure it's from chanel it's when i went to have my makeup done um the lady sort of yeah. showed it to me as a bit extra and actually i've used that <laughs> more than the makeup <laughs> she suggested for me <laughs> <laughs> so, Linda, I think I know the answer to this because I think I can see it. What is your favourite item of jewellery? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am, I am definitely wearing it. So I was laughing when I said about pearls because I live in pearl <laughs> earrings normally. I wear the same pair every day, which is very boring, isn't it? But this, um, my husband commissioned to have um, made for me. Um, and it's silver and it has the white horse on um, and I love it and so um, when and I'm are they hands, matching yeah, earrings and they are matching earrings which to be fair I don't always wear as a set can I you come a bit wear, nearer yeah. come a bit nearer aren't they are fab I tend aren't to they wear the earrings separately yeah normally but I thought today I'd wear it as a, a set <laughs> Oh, they look fabulous. And actually, Michaela has said it is brilliant and it is from Chanel. So there you are. So who is your favourite artist? Oh, that's, that's a difficult one because, oh, I like, I like lots and lots of different art. Um, oh, I really like Julian Opie. I have and, no idea who Julian <laughs> O'P is. And that's a modern artist, and I have some prints from him, which I absolutely adore. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, too many, too many to choose from. But Julian O'P, we awesome. need to Google then, don't we? <laughs> he did the album cover for Blur. Oh, God, I don't even know who Blur <laughs> are. <laughs> I get them all so confused. Um, what is your favourite food? Sarah, that's a really difficult one. <laughs> Blimey. You know, I like lots of different food. I don't think I could choose a favourite one. That's what about a type of cuisine one. then? Is that easier? A type of cuisine, yes, I would say I probably love Mediterranean food. So um, we tend to, to eat, um, I, I, don't, I don't eat a, a lot of meat. Um, Dave, my husband, is, is well, pescatarian. And even though I would eat meat if I wanted to, um, I love fish. Um, and I love a lot of vegetarian food. So, yeah, um, Mediterranean, I think. Um, and I have been experimenting with a lot of fungi recipes. Um, 
as well on the vegetarian side and they are fabulous not not for the calorie conscious but fabulous i just buy his books and read them. <laughs> well, okay. i still haven't brilliant. converted it into practice yeah. yet well to be fair it's mostly dave that's been um, <laughs> so that's the royal way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I keep looking at my Ottolenghi books and keep thinking, oh, wouldn't that be lovely? But I think I'd do it in an alternative life. So, um, yeah, it's just, I know that they actually, once you've got everything organised, are really, really easy recipes yeah. to make and absolutely delicious. It's just that, you know, like you, I live in the middle of bloody nowhere discovering that you've got three items missing yeah. you know you can't nip around the corner can you so yeah, you need yeah. to be really well organized and of course dave is organized he is very well organized and also i think um one, his book the vegetarian one which is called plenty to be fair doesn't have a lot of esoteric ingredients in it the sort of thing that you would normally have as long as you've got ginger and, and garlic in your fridge well i haven't got <laughs> half of them <laughs> And I keep looking at plenty. And actually, most of his um, recipes are vegetarian anyway, aren't they? You just add yes, the meat. Yes, I, think so. I think that's what he's always very careful to say, um, is that uh, with his recipes, you just add the meat if you want yes. them. Right, so how many emails do you write each day? Oh, probably too many, to be fair. Um, does that count at work? Yes, yeah, it's just interesting because... See how oh, many you write a day. Blimey, probably over a hundred. Oh <gasps> my God! Yeah, definitely. Because I, I think at work, particularly, an awful lot of um, conversations that I would have are by email, simply because they have to be documented. Really, so not not for any bad reason, but just so that there's a um, a trail if I want to go back and see answers to questions. So obviously I know what you do, but perhaps you'd like to explain to everybody yeah, else. Yes, I, I work for um, a local kitchen company based just outside Methwold, uh, and I look after the, the um, part of the ordering side and customer service and, and dealing with the suppliers. So any queries, stuff in on time, that sort of thing. So this place is called New Rooms, isn't it? And how far do they spread their wings? Because it's not just in West Norfolk that they'll put in kitchens and bathrooms no. and bedrooms. Here's the advert <laughs> bit. <laughs> no, actually, we, we've done um, we, we've done a kitchen in in London, uh, Cambridge, uh, quite frequently. We go to Colchester, up to the North Norfolk coast, um, pretty much anywhere in in East Anglia, really, and, and obviously further afield if if requested. So there you are, ladies. You need to Google new rooms. Um, Elaine's saying hello to you, and uh, you need Hi, to Elaine. talk a bit louder. You're not shouting. Shouting. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm a bit, um, like a bit hoarse at the moment, so I'm so sorry. And your favourite cocktail? Oh, favourite cocktail, probably um, a mojito. So what is a mojito? That's rum, rum, lime, and a bit of sugar syrup and lots of fresh mint. Yeah, so you're wondering why you've got a high eat to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yes, because actually the husband's been making mojitos were our favourite lockdown treat. <laughs> so, so maybe that could explain it. <laughs> rum and lime juice, marvellous. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Throw in a chilli or <laughs> <Yeah>. ten. <laughs> so gin or fags? <laughs> oh, gin definitely. Never, never, never done fags. Definitely, but I am a definitely a big gin lover. <laughs> so, what's your favourite gin at the moment? Um, I actually like um, I like Sevilla gin, which is tankery. Um, and actually, I like the the oldie, the oldie knockoff version, which actually won Master of Mods award above um, Tanqueray Sevilla, um, and that's I think called Persian Lime and Orange, um, and it's not as orangey as Tanqueray, but it's very pleasant. Well, there and about you are. Ten pounds cheaper. Oh, not to love. <laughs> well, if I ever get through the gin bottle I'm drinking at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I might go to Aldi and get another one. Um, letter or postcard? Oh, um, do 
you know, I have not written um, a letter for absolutely years. Is that in terms of receiving? Do you know, I, how fab would it be to receive a letter? Honestly, I have written postcards, but no, I, I, I would prefer to um, receive a letter and, and possibly I would, yeah, I do sometimes do postcards when, when on holiday in, in my alternative life when I, when I used to go on holiday. Um, but I think I would probably prefer writing a letter as well. So what you need is a pen pal. I have a pen pal. In order to receive a letter, Linda, you need to write mm. one. Yes, yes. So that's obviously where I've been going wrong. <laughs> I do. That's. Right. I do occasionally write a letter to my nephew, who um, who's only eight and lives in Jersey. So I I, I do write occasionally. <laughs> so we forgot to say at the beginning, you are married to Dave, and you have a son. Andrew, yes. who's living in Brighton at the moment. Indeed. And your next question is, what have you learnt from your child? Oh, blimey, how impatient I am. That's what I've learnt from my child. Oh, and um, yes, I would say that's the, that's the biggest lesson. And, and also that however much... You, you you think in life that you're doing the right thing. Um, children always, I think children always surprise you. Um, and also that it's not easy being a parent. <laughs> Absolutely not. And, and, and you can't, you know, congratulate yourself and that because you think, because actually that, that's, it's, it's luck. It's not what you do, I think, a lot of the time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he's a poppet, so you know you a, drew. He's a complete poppet, but yes, he tells me I'm very impatient. <laughs> I don't think you're impatient at all. <laughs> I think he's <it's> smacking. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your biggest regret? Oh, I think um, my biggest uh, regret is actually not not living in the moment more. I, I think I've spent too much of my life, um, sometimes looking back and sometimes trying to um, make my, my, or not make my life something it isn't, but regretting the fact that my life is something that it isn't. Um, and if it's not, not too cliche to, to say that I think one thing that, that lockdown has for me been, been a positive thing is that I have tried very to live in the moment more and actually count my blessings uh, instead of always looking to change what I, perhaps what I can't change and enjoy what, what I have which is lovely. So what I need to do is get you that serenity prayer then. <laughs> yes, yes I do like the serenity prayer to be fair. I think yes. we all need it yes. stuck up in our kitchen actually yes. because it's very very yes. easy to forget isn't it? A very good friend of mine actually has it in her downstairs um, playroom. Okay, yeah, no, I just think we all need to hang on to it, don't we? Yes, because we can waste so much time or, or so much of our lives otherwise, can't we? Just, yes, you know, trying to change things that we can't um, and actually not spending as much time sorting out things that are within our grasp. Yeah. Um, Anyway, that's very deep. What's your favourite taste? Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's too difficult. That's like food. <laughs> I don't, coffee. Um, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I love coffee. Dark chocolate. Um, gin and tonic. Mm. Red wine. Cheese. <laughs> fruit. <laughs> Fruit. I love fruit. So you don't have a favourite. You, no. You're, you're I, I, a bit I, of a slut I, in the I, taste department. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Too many things to choose from. And what f did you cry? Oh gosh. Do you know I, I'm I'm a, a closet crier at children's <laughs> children's films, but the one that remains of the day. Um, oh okay. Did because I just the book probably 
made me cry more actually, um, even though I did think that the, the film ad adaptation was good, it wasn't as powerful as the book, but I thought it was, it was very sad. Yeah, yeah. actually, what's his name? Because he's really good, isn't he? Yes. Yes, Can you know, remember it? Um, think, Kazoo, is it Kazuo Shiguru? I can't remember. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> that but bloke. You, but you didn't like the book I made you read. <laughs> 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 no, oh, God, it was like bloody Tolkien. It was <laughs> dreadful. It <wasn't> <laughs> so this is why we get on, because we've got absolutely nothing in common. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get dressed in the morning? How do I get dressed? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can say quickly, slowly, oh, the order. Um, um, quick, quickly. Actually, um, I, I'm. <laughs> she's really going to take the Mickey out of me now. I actually put my clothes out the night before. Oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> I don't so, in, the this. in the morning, in the morning, <laughs> ladies, don't take any notice of it. In the I get up and I take the dogs before I go to work. So you get so, dressed? Yes. You don't go naked? No, of course I don't go naked. So I put my clothes out the night before. So I can literally just get up, run through the shower, put my clothes on and take the dogs. So they before. are, you're going to work clothes. They're not, you're, um, you're not it, it, rushing yes, about. If, if I can get away with that. It, to be honest, if, it, if it's horrible weather, then I probably would put scruffs on before. So you don't yeah. crawl around the floor sniffing armpits? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I like Donna and I. <laughs> I have introduced you to French washing though, yeah, Linda, yeah, haven't yes. I? Yeah. So would you like to tell everybody what French washing is? <laughs> I can't remember how you introduced me to that, but it did make me laugh. And I have been known to um, to dash home, and instead of going through the shower, <laughs> just quick spritz of <laughs> perfume. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> what is a question that you hate to be asked? Oh, um, I'm not sure. I. Um, not, not that I can think of you. You probably know me better. No, better I can't know. think of I any either. I just thought that that would... I'm trying to ask questions that perhaps I wouldn't know the answer to. I, and I understand that, but I, to be honest, I think you could ask me anything. I might not answer, <laughs> and I certainly might not answer truthfully. <laughs> you could ask me anything. And what question do you wish you were asked more often? Um, oh, that's a, that's a, a that's also a, a difficult one. Um, I don't think I've ever thought about that really. What question would I like to be asked more often? Are Apart you okay? From, yeah, well, possibly are, are you okay? But I think my, possibly, possibly, I, th I think, yes, I, I, I'm probably not, not somebody who would advertise the fact if I wasn't okay. Elaine's so, just said, do you want another drink? Yeah. <laughs> do you know, I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, obviously Elaine knows me far too well. Would you like another glass of staying um, with me this this weekend and we have a phrase um, that we use which is it's a bit which comes um, she um, sadly lost lost her, her her partner several years ago and lived in Australia for for um, I think 19 years um, and we have a phrase which came from Australia which is it's very dry around here <laughs> to a cup of tea but in all fairness mostly doesn't <laughs> so you're not going to be the full ticket tomorrow then possibly not <laughs> so what is your favorite family heirloom oh i don't i don't have a lot of um family heirlooms um my my i don't come from from a particularly sort of 
I suppose a, a well-off family that tended to pass things down. But I do, I do have um, a lovely chest which belonged um, to my father, an oak chest, a blanket chest. Um, and that's probably my favourite, simply because it reminds me of him. And what is your favourite flower? Um, that's, I do love all flowers, probably, but I think probably roses. Because mm. so, yeah. your dad loved roses, didn't yes, he? Yes, my dad loved roses and, and they remind me um, of him. But also I just love, I, I particularly like the old fashioned type um, roses. Um, that have a scent and very scent blousy. And, and very blousy and I can't think, David Austin. David roses. Austin do yeah. them, yeah. And also yeah. Uh, Peter Bill do them, right. say. Yeah. And of course Peter Bill is just up the road from yeah, us, isn't absolutely. he? So do you have any animals? <laughs> Indeed I do. And in fact, my house is probably, goodness knows what I'm going to go back to because the friend who's staying with me has, has brought her seven month old um, Cocker Spaniel boy, who is an absolute delight. But as you can imagine, fancy as anything. My dogs have gone, whoa. <laughs> I have um, a flat coat retriever um, and a rescue dog who has a lot of spaniel in her as well and also quite a lot of terrier which is marvellous and a bit of collie just just the mix that you would probably not choose to have in a dog so um probably the worst yeah the worst one you can possibly yes. think of and my flat coat is is um <clears throat> sorry do excuse me um, my flat coat is also very jealous because she's very fond of my my friend jill um and in fact has been called princess by, by Jill because she, of course she's not at all spoiled. Um, and so she's not in the slightest bit impressed that Jill <laughs> has got a puppy. <laughs> she's really, really not happy. <laughs> I think you've got a lot in common with Elaine because she had a flat coat as well. Ah. So there you are. Um, what is your favourite item of artichoke clothing? Ooh. That's a difficult one as well because I have some lovely items. At the moment, I would say it's my black dress, which which obviously we all we all have. Um, my oh, actually, we do, don't we? Yeah, yeah. we all we all have it, and and that was my my lockdown uh, date dress <laughs> for when we had mojitos in the in the garden, <laughs> um, and I love it because it's it's comfortable, but it makes me feel like I'm, I'm making an effort without having to make an awful lot of effort. Um, I also love this this jacket, which is, oh, I don't know how many seasons old. So well, I didn't even recognise no. it. So uh, I think it must be five summers old. I, I think at so least. least if, if not slightly more I old. think that we had that the year we opened Ely, which would be six summers yes, ago. I, it probably was, um, because I think I did have it from the Ely. Yeah. Shop. Yeah. Um, yes, and I love it. It's comfortable. It still looks gorgeous. I thought yeah. it was brand new. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Um, and I love my artichoke shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and I love my, my loafers, my washable loafers. <laughs> where, do I, where do I stop? <laughs> and actually those dresses we're going to get in next year as well. So if you miss the black dresses that we all snaffled quite quickly, <laughs> we are going to have them in next year. And they are very flattering. As long as you don't mind showing your arms, actually quite a lot can go wrong underneath them, can't yeah. they? Yeah, and very comfortable as well. Do you have a phobia? Um... Not really, not not that I would call a phobia, but I am, um, as you know, I, I am slightly claustrophobic, mm. so I'm not great in um, confined spaces, um, and um, I really, really, really don't like slugs. I wouldn't say that I'm phobic. I, I could, I could just about pick one up if I had to, but um, my husband on on several occasions has made me shriek by <laughs> chasing me around. Around the garden oh my with them, God, which is not his nice, vile. Really nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you pick them up without a bit of tissue? Um, I, c I could if I had to, oh, I but couldn't. I wouldn't choose oh, to. Oh my God, <laughs> no. I could, wouldn't choose to. I'm really not very keen on them, but if I had to, I would. <laughs> Vintage or new? Oh, a mix. I don't think you, you can choose that. 
you can choose between the, the two. Um, I don't actually have a lot of vintage items. If you're talking about, are we talking about clothes? Or well, clothes anything, or anything really, I think. Well, I, I think, think it's just mix. sort of an attitude, I, I suppose. I think the mix is lovely. I like, I like having some vintage um, furniture. Um, I like vintage um, fabrics. Vintage clothes I'm not great on because my figure it doesn't really do the vintage um, thing. Um, and probably any vintage items I might hanker after are, are, are above my my budget. <laughs> I did I did um, I did look at a fant went into a fantastic vintage clothes shop with a, a friend um, in Portobello Road, and ah, oh, honestly, they were absolutely fabulous. But you needed um, a small bank loan to buy anything, so so sadly that didn't happen. <laughs> So aspirationally yes, vintage. Yes, aspirationally vintage, most definitely. What is the first thing that you notice about someone when you meet them? Um, probably their smile and their, their eyes. And what are you reading at the moment? Can you remember? Oh, gosh. Um, Oh, blimey, I'm reading loads of them. I've got about four on the go. I don't know how um, you keep track reading well, four on the go. Because, because I tend to read mostly what I would call sort of a, a light reading, which is, which is I, li I like um, crime sort of psychological type thriller um, ones. Um, so I'm sorry, that's completely hopeless, but, uh, but I've got... Absolutely. Oh, I tell you what I am reading actually. I'm reading um, Sweet Sorrow by David Nichols, which is his latest, which is very good. Uh huh. And that book you lent me that I'm reading <sighs> about the dementia yes, one. Yes. Yeah. Can I, you remember what that one's called? Uh, no. uh, we are. So we are something. Anyway. If I ever could remember what it was called, we are not ourselves. We That's ourselves. it. That is That's really good. I'm really it's enjoying it's really it. Good, isn't it? But I can't really. remember the author actually. No. Not somebody that I, I'd come across. Before. But the name is. If you remember the name, we, we are, are not yeah. ourselves. It's a really, really good book. Yes, yeah, so and not and not the, the dementia doesn't form the major part no. of it. Really, does it? Even though it's a, it's a story of a family's life, yeah. isn't it? Which is it's, it's really bizarre, good. Yeah. It? No, yeah. I love it. Uh, cake or ice cream? Ooh, probably, probably cake actually, but only if it's only only if it's cocoa <laughs> 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 or or homemade by somebody mm. who makes. I'm really really fussy about cake. Um, I'm I'm more of a savoury person than, mm. than a sweet person really. Um, yeah, and I do like ice cream occasionally, but I wouldn't wouldn't go mad. And what is the best part of your job? Um, oh, I think the best part of my job is hopefully making a difference, getting things sorted for people, whether that be um, making sure that, that where we've got problems with the deliveries, that that, that gets sorted in a timely manner. Um, and customers who have issues, it's always nice to be able to sort um, issues for people. What advice would you give your 13 year old self? Oh, my 13 year old self? Probably, probably buy more albums. Oh, <laughs> Get a bloody Get life! A life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Oh. And how would you like to be remembered? Oh. How would I like to be remembered? Hopefully, as as somebody who who does their best and and is kind. I'm not always as kind as I should be. I have my moments, but um, I think that's a load of old square. Well, yeah, as somebody somebody who did their best and and somebody who was kind. So, Linda, thank you very much indeed for your 30 questions. Um, ladies, I hope that you enjoyed listening to Linda. Um, we're going to take a week off with Sunday Starling this week because, as I've mentioned already, I'm going to see a man about some gilets. Um, 
we think we might get Donna organised for next Thursday doing any questions, but I haven't actually asked her yet, so that might be a non-starter. And next Sunday, we are going to do a transseasonal dressing. So not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Uh, Sunday Starling is transseasonal dressing. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fabulous weekend and we will catch up with you next week. And thank you, Linda, for answering your 30 questions.